Well, our, our position. Yeah, please. Oh, we have that. Brian Watkins, B R I A N W A T K I N S. Mark Carlos, M A R C C A R L O S. Emily Barr, E M I L Y B A H R. Step right up to the mic. Speak up. Thank you. Well, we're happy that the jury took so long to deliberate this case. Clearly, they dissected the evidence very thoroughly. Clearly, this case is not over. We will continue to litigate this case and, until our client is exonerated. How is Helen still holding up right now? What was his reaction then to all this? He's a bit. He's, he's, he's strong right now. I mean, he knows he knows that there's going to uh, there's going to be an appeal. Uh, he, he you know litigated the case for him. Uh, he's, he's holding pretty tight to himself right now. Brian, Julia Shane's court TV. What do you think the jury's indecision in this case says about the case to that one? Well, we always knew that the case wasn't strong, I meaning we have a unique case where our key witnesses were the police. I mean, very, very rarely do you see a defense case calling police as their key witnesses. So we've always thought the case was very weak. We're going to continue to litigate this case until our client is exonerated. But the split suggests that it was in favor of the prosecution in terms of all the Jane Doe's. So are you going to do anything differently if they retry this case? Whenever we retry a case, we look at what works and what doesn't work, and we go back to the drawing table and come back out with a bigger and stronger case. But the biggest thing to realize is that there is a dispute amongst jurors, so we can't tell what the next 12 are going to do. It could be a bigger split or it could go the other way. The point is there's a dispute as to the credibility of these, of these uh, witnesses, and I think that's very important. What did the jury tell you? A lot of things. What can you share with us that the jury told you? What did they find powerful in, in your arguments? I don't want to comment. They, they talked to us. They were very, um, what's the word? They were very almost intimate with us back there because they, they told us about what they were thinking. And I, I don't want to date them. That. You mentioned credibility. Was that a big part of why there was so much indecision that they found some of the accounts of the women who said that they were assaulted? Absolutely. Credibility is the, the issue in this case. There's no cooperating evidence whatsoever. It's just people's word. It's just the accuser's word. That's, all they, that's pretty much all they had to go on. Coming back to just four counts, do you think that says something about the decision to try these cases together? Well, we were always concerned about trying these cases together. Our position was always that these cases would not be able to stand alone. We fought to keep the cases separate. We lost that battle. We took on all these cases at once, and we still, you know, prevailed to the point where we did not get convicted of everything, and we have more litigation to do. It sounds like, based on the fact that you asked for a time waiver, that you don't want him to be sentenced on the one conviction. You want to wait until it's done, or am I interpreting that correctly? We just have to wait. We, it, it's you know, we just had this this verdict today. We need to we need to sort of regroup and figure out what we're going to do. How many jurors talked to you? All of them. They all stayed in the room. All twelve. First time I've ever talked to twelve jurors at one time. And an all. And an all. Yeah. So they all was wanted that, to talk. Was there anything one of them said that surprised you at all? I mean, like I said, I, I don't think we should, I mean, I, I, I think Dan will be in agreement here that, that they went out of their way to speak to us in confidence, and it's, you know, we'll keep it with them ourselves. Uh, Mark and Brian. The counts that they did not decide on, the circumstances of those counts? Not without my notepad. <laughs> <laughs> but Jane Doe 1 was, you, you Mark, you, you attacked her credibility Pretty vigorous, yet the split was five to seven in favor. Five to seven, I guess, in favor of acquittal, but it still was not a not guilty. And right. that, those were pretty strong. I mean, that was. I mean, would you have done anything differently? I don't think I. I don't think I would have done anything differently because the, the case is what it is. But I think what the split shows. I mean, that's pretty close. I mean, five seven or six six. I mean, it shows that you can't get twelve people to vote guilty on a case like that. I think that any time the case gets tried again, it's going to be the same situation, it's going to be the same facts, and there's always, I think you're never going to get 12 people to, to agree on that. Well, did you make the right decision in not putting your client on? I believe so. Are you uh, yeah, what I wanted to ask you, it speaks more towards those splits, um, you know, 10-2, 10-2, 8-4, 10-2 for, for guilty, and I know you guys are still, you know, decompressing and rehashing all this, but what do those numbers tell you, because those are pretty, I mean, I'm sure Dan you know, will probably tell us that those are pretty strong numbers. Um, it looks like you had at least, you know, two holdouts, but again, those were, um, you know, strong numbers in favor of conviction. 
Well, to me, it tells me that there's reasonable doubt. I mean, they cannot come to a unanimous decision, which is what jury trials are for. They couldn't do it. That's why it was a mistrial. So there's clearly reasonable doubt. I don't know what occurred in that jury room. I don't know how their arguments were. I mean, clearly, there were a lot of arguing, vigorous arguments. They were in there fighting for a week, pretty much, and were unable to come to a conclusion, which means 12 reasonable minds had to differ. Yeah, it goes, it goes both ways. I mean, anything can happen in the next trial. It could go Absolutely. the opposite way. And the bottom line is, you know, this is the greatest system of justice in the world, just in the world, because of this. Twelve people you know, from the community who decide this case, and it could be different the next time, but, you know, we won't know until we get to that trial. And I know you guys felt very strongly um, about not putting Mr. Winslow on the stand. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that decision not to put him on the stand? Well, when you make a decision like that, I mean, a lot of factors go into it. You know, that's a very scary position up there. You're up on a pedestal. You got all these eyes looking at you, let alone your eyes with these cameras. It's a very difficult situation. The person's life is on the line. It's a very stressful situation. So it's nothing that somebody wants to enter into, you know, really nilly. In light of what Mr. Winslow could have faced, life, life in prison, are you satisfied in general terms uh, with the outcome of this case? No, we're not satisfied. We're not going to be satisfied until he's exonerated, until he's back home with his family. Do you think he'll take the stand in the next trial? Way too premature to even think about anything like that. Any thoughts on why they convicted um, on some counts involving women? They seem to believe some women and not the others. Any, any thoughts on that? That, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I was not back in the jury room with deliberations. How they came to the conclusions that they did, I'm not you know, privy to that. Mark, given the uh, headway that you guys made, it, made on cross on Jane Doe 1, were you surprised that seven of the 12 jurors still voted guilty? Yeah, I mean, it's it's always, uh, I've said this from the beginning, I, I think that, that the fact that there were multiple victims in this case made it very difficult for a jury to kind of see. I, I think if, if, this case, if that case were tried by itself, I don't think you'd see any split at all because it's, uh, I don't believe that there was enough there, but I think that given the fact that there are multiple victims and, and uh, different types of allegations, I think that might have skewed some of the jury's thinking. I, I think what we take away from it is the fact that you still can't get 12 people to agree on that. But it was just so interesting because they found that there, were, there was no multiple victim <coughs> Um, special circumstance, yet they did find him guilty with regards to Jane Doe, too. Well, that's one victim, and they didn't find multiple victims, so they're basically saying that there were not multiple victims. Right. That was the basis of the motion we filed this morning. Right. Okay. So, does this mean that life or potential life sentence is off the table? Well, we have Given to, that finding? Well, we have to relitigate the case. Um, we're not sure what the prosecution is going to do. Um, so, Nothing is really, but a mistrial, it's, it's a do-over. So nothing is really finalized yet. Emily, you spent a lot of time, I noticed, answering the questions of your clients during this trial with a lot of twists and turns. How do you approach explaining not only a mistrial, but get a client prepared to go through this again? We're going to be, we do spend a lot of time with him outside of the courtroom. We're going to be spending a lot more time with him. Again, getting prepared for our Friday hearing and going forward, we'll be, we'll be talking to him a lot. There, there's only so much that you can do in a whispered tone um, at council table um, to explain what's happening at any given moment throughout the case. So those, those are long conversations to be done in private. And to follow up on that, Ms. Park, can you, can you tell us what, you know, outside of the courtroom, what was his reaction to yesterday's guilty verdict? He was shocked. He was shocked by that verdict. Can you talk a little bit about um, the reaction of his family about the outcome? They're upset, of course, disappointed by, the, by that outcome, um, but they know that the team is going to move forward and um, continue to fight the case. Emily, I know you can't say like specifically what was said, but was Mr. Winslow particularly involved in his defense? Like, it, like uh, was said before, it seemed like he had a lot of conversations as it was going on. Yeah, I think many, uh, many, many among you noted that he was very involved um, in this case from beginning to end. He was um, he, an excellent client to have in that regard. Very, very involved, motivated, um, and conversational with us at all times. And just to clarify, you were talking about um, Kellen Winslow Jr. or his father. 
they were both very involved, but um, as a, a client, Mr. Winslow II was a very involved client within, in his own defense. And then just to clarify, what's the next step? There's a hearing on Friday? We set a trial date on Friday. For the new, a new trial already? Yes. So no sentencing will happen? Uh, set, well, set a date. We don't know what's going to happen at this point, though. Does the next jury get to hear about the conviction for the rape on Jane Doe? That's a subject of motions that we're going to have to file to. So it's a whole new trial. If the trial, if there is a new trial, it's a whole new just uh, case. So we need to work it up. It's not all over again. We've been trying to sever those as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what makes you think that? Yes. You guys, you guys, you're appealing the convictions, right? Yes. On what basis? Can you talk about that? Not at this point. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Specifically, what do those numbers tell you in terms of moving forward for um, the next trial? The district attorney's office has a process for evaluating uh, any mistrials that result from a hung jury. We're going to follow that process. But when the jury's vote does favor guilt, that is a significant factor in considering whether or not to proceed with the retrial. Have you spoken to the victims? I have spoken to a number of the victims. I have been in court this morning, uh, so I have not spoken to them since the court declared a mistrial. Not me personally. What was the conversation like with them, especially uh, Jane Doe's one and four about the hung part and the So like I said, I've been in court uh, okay. and addressing the jury and addressing the court, so I haven't had an opportunity to speak, uh, to speak to Jane Doe one or Jane Doe four regarding the court's declaration of a mistrial. And, and, and just, to, just to clarify, obviously when you meet on Friday, you're going to set uh, a, a new trial date, but it, it's a done deal. There will be a new trial. Uh, I'm not ready to comment at this time that there will be a retrial. Uh, as the court said, Mr. Winslow does have a right uh, to be tried within 60 court days. He's entered an open general time waiver, waiving that right uh, to a speedy retrial. Uh, the district attorney's office will follow their procedure in determining whether or not to retry Mr. Winslow. So it would be premature to comment on that at this time. Do you think that decision will be made by Friday's hearing? I think there's a significant possibility that it will be, uh, but I'm going to defer to Ms step in to make that decision. As it stands right now with, with the guilty verdicts, what, what time is he looking at? As of right now, he's facing eight years in state prison and lifetime sex offender registration for the forceful rape of Jane Doe II. He would be facing an additional six months uh, for each one of the misdemeanor counts of indecent exposure and lewd acts committed against Jane Doe's three and five for a total of potentially nine years in, in prison. I asked the same question of the defense team. Um, are you satisfied with the outcome of this uh, trial? I am uh, grateful for the jury's um, diligent service. I think that the fact that they have returned convictions, finding that Mr. Winslow uh, did forcibly rape Jane Doe too is appropriate. And given the vote split that we've been discussing, I think that they were working hard and had uh, quite a majority uh, that showed that he did, in fact, commit crimes against multiple victims. So I am personally satisfied, and I thank the jury for their service. 
if this goes to a new trial, um, is one of the challenges for the prosecution convincing the victims to come forward, to, to relive their, you know, go through this whole process of testimony again? Well, given the fact that we do have a potential pending trial date, I don't want to comment about the victims individually. But what I can say is that, generally speaking, in the prosecution of any sexual assault offense, especially cases of this magnitude, um, it is difficult for victims to have to come to court and go through this process. Um, it's difficult just on a personal level for them, but it also does have ramifications for them going forward, as you can imagine. Based on the outcome, are you going to reconsider trying to multiply uh, I would never say that we're going to reconsider it. What we have done is uh, we have litigated extensively with the court making the decisions based on the law, what cases can be tried together. And as you saw in this trial, this judge uh, followed the law and decided that uh, each one of these individual Jane Doe's could uh, be brought together. Uh, that would be subject to more motions, and this judge would follow the law. I, I would fully expect that he would follow the law uh, on any retrial. And as far as Jane Doe 2, is she now not going to be part of the retrial or the prosecution? Well, as you all know, there was a split as it related to the forcible sodomy of Jane Doe 2. So that case and that charge remains pending, and it is still the subject of the exact same case number that could potentially be set for retrial as early as Friday. Is it possible that the jury uh, in the next trial would know about his conviction for Jane Doe 2? That would also be a subject of motions in what way they may know about it and how the court would advise them uh, how they would be able to consider it. Is there a way to get around it if the charge of sodomy, you know, but I'm just wondering how you can keep it in a bubble or isolated if the charge of sodomy is part of the that, that would be subject to the court's rulings and the court's instructions to the jury. But what I can say is that there are legal principles that allow for even uncharged offenses that may have previously been adjudicated with guilty verdicts and actual convictions that could still be admissible in terms of the evidence of what happened before a new jury. Dan, I know you can't get into specific interactions that you guys had with the jury back there, but is there anything that you learned from those interactions that uh, you know, would alter how you pursue this case if it goes forward? Well, I would say that there was quite a bit that we did learn. Um, as Mr. Carlos said, they were very candid with us. They were very forthright. I thought that, um, like I've said before, they were very diligent in their consideration of, of the case. Um, and my takeaway from that conversation is that 10 jurors did feel very strongly that he had uh, committed forcible sexual offenses against more than one victim. Um, that would lead to a lifetime uh, prison term, and that will be another factor that we would consider very strongly in determining how to proceed with the case. I think you said you didn't talk to any of the victims since the meet mistrial, but were you able to talk to Jane Doe 2 yesterday after the conviction? I was able to talk to uh, the victims who were the subject of the conviction yesterday. And can you tell us about their reaction? I would not comment on that, just like I wouldn't comment on anything that the jury has said. Um, what I can tell you is that I know that there is a deep sense of relief in the process. It's not easy for any sexual assault victim to have to testify in court, let alone with all of the attention that's been brought in, uh, into this individual case. Um, I certainly support them in all that they've done and the courage and bravery they've shown. Did, did the fact that the Winslow family is so popular at San Diego ever change your, the way you, you came to this case? or? Not at all. In fact, uh, I think that every single case, whatever it may be, whether there's media attention or none whatsoever, um, really needs to be approached the same way. Um, you take the facts, you apply the law, and you let the jury make their decision. Really, the reason why uh, I respect the jury's work on this case um, so much is that you have 12 members of the community being brought in off the street, and they have to come together, and they have to listen to this type of testimony, this type of argument from experienced attorneys, and they have to make a decision. So I respect that community decision and the process we engage in, and would never treat it any differently depending upon the amount of media attention that's given to it. Were you surprised that as it relates to Jane number 5 that they came back with guilty for one of the conducts but not the other? I, in fact, do respect their de decision there. I understand it to be uh, something that may be difficult and one of the elements that have to be proven is that he did, in fact, physically contact his genital area uh, given the testimony that was given by Jane Doe 5. Um, she did never personally saw it. It was really the inference made from the circumstantial evidence of what he had done before and what he was doing in that particular motion. So I do respect that uh, jury verdict. Can you say the jurors who did not believe some of the women, did they think that they were doing it for money? Did they say, 
why it is? Short answer is no, but I'm not going to comment on the, specific, the specifics of what they've said. There has been no comment from any of the jurors uh, regarding money or anything to that effect. And, and obviously the, the jury had the final say with regards to Jane Doe 1, but um, the defense team certainly attacked her credibility. Um, how would you characterize her credibility on the stand? I'm not going to comment on a pending charge involving a sexual assault victim. Um, I'm, in fact, barred by the professional rules of conduct on, com on commenting on any ongoing litigation. But what I, what I will say is that any sexual assault victim who's placed into this forum, who's placed uh, on that witness stand, will have a very difficult time being able to get through that process. It would have made a difference had Kevin Winslow taken the stand himself. I will not comment on Mr. Winslow's right to not uh, testify in his own defense. Did you say you spoke with two of the victims that got convictions? Is that Jane Doe 2 and Jane Doe 3? Uh, our, a member of our office did speak directly with Jane Doe 3. I did not personally speak with her, but Jane Doe's uh, 2 and Jane Doe's 5. Uh, Jane, you spoke with Jane Doe's 2 and Jane Doe's 3? Yes. Is it possible some Jane Doe's will not take the stand as next time? Well, that really depends upon the court's rulings, um, based upon any motions that may be filed. Um, but as it stands right now, there are counts that relate to each individual Jane Doe, with the exception of Jane Doe 3 that would still be pending in any region. Dan, did any of the Jane Doe's, after they testified, indicate any kind of reluctance to do it again, as, as they would have to do if there was a retrial? I cannot comment on any of those uh, conversations. In fact, I didn't really have a question that I wanted to ask them. What I wanted to do is thank them for their service and the fact that they've now been able to return guilty verdicts, finding that Mr. Winslow did forcibly rape Jane Doe too, as well as uh, finding him accountable for three of the five victims that we brought forward uh, in this case. In terms of the question and answers and the, the other comments on the performance of the attorneys and the evidence in the case, that's helpful, I think, to all parties uh, to be able to evaluate how to proceed with any retrial. All right. Not it. Very happy. Thanks, Thanks for doing this. Thank you, guys.